All right, so let's take a look at grep in PowerShell, except in PowerShell, it's not called grep. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a separate commandlet called select string. So for this demo, we're gonna be referencing a CSV file that I have here as well. And this is all fake data, don't worry. But what we'll be doing is uh, using grep for PowerShell to pull data out of here. So select string has a, has a lot of parameters. We're not gonna cover all of them. I mean, my goal is to get you started down the path of using a select string. So here you see that I'm using the path parameter to give it a path, and this can take wildcards, so you don't have to pass it an absolute path. Uh, and then also a pattern. In this case, I'm looking for Joe in that CSV file. So if I run line three, you can see down below that it's gonna output and highlight each time it finds that pattern. And in this case, it's also outputting the entire uh, line. So you can see we got Joe Gallimore and Joe Mobby. And then on line five, you notice I'm piping it. Each of these line items is in PowerShell object. So I can select all of the properties from the first one with this select object star dash first one. And there you go. You can see there's a few properties besides just the line itself. So for instance, on line seven, We'll use the same pattern, same file, but we're gonna expand the matches property. You can see that it's gonna show all of the matches that it finds. So if you're familiar with regular expressions in PowerShell, if you use the dash match operator, it creates the automatic variable called matches. Line seven, the matches property is the same thing. So that pattern, so not only can path take a wildcard if you wanted, and I've got, only got one file here to show you, uh, but you can also pass an array of patterns to the pattern parameter. So line 12, I'm passing three names. So there we can see there's three instances of these three names and Jerry doesn't show up at all. But we can pipe this because they're PowerShell objects, remember, and we're gonna grab the file name pattern and line. And there you can, you can get some better output. So if you wanted to track this and report on it separately, you can do that. You can now put it to a CSV if you wanted. So what's really cool about the pattern parameter on select string is that it takes regular expressions. So you can just pass it strings like we've been doing, but you can also pass an actual regular expression to it. So here on line 20, I've got a regular expression. And kudos to you if you can tell what it's going to match on <laughs> without me telling you. Regular expressions are notoriously hard to read. Uh, this, In this case, this is looking for an email address. So it's looking for these types of characters in front of the at symbol and then a domain after the at symbol. And don't take my word for it, let's actually run this. So you can see that most, if not all of the users in this file actually have, only four of them have what this regular expression considers to be a valid email address. And if we scroll over to the right here, you can see that I'm only selecting the first 10 of them in case there are more. However, I think this file, seven, eight, nine. yeah, this file only has 11 lines anyway. So we could, we could cut that down if we wanted. We could select the first, you know, five. Beauty of piping in PowerShell, love it. So line 22, we can also pass it a regular expression that looks for uh, social security numbers. So we get the three digits, the two digits, and the four digits. So we'll go ahead and run line 22. And you can see here that we've got uh, quite a few uh, social security numbers in that file. Hmm, thank you they're fake, so don't worry. But if they were real, we would want to have a talk with uh, whoever was creating and storing these uh, social security numbers in plain text. And here at line 24, uh, this pattern, uh, we're looking for IP addresses. And so you'll notice that we're really just looking for one to three digits dot, one to three digits dot, one to three digits dot, one to three digits. So if it passed an IP address that had an octet that was greater than 255, well, this would still match on it. So it's not a perfect regular expression, but the point here is that you can see it and, and understand what it is pretty easily. So we run this, we see all the IP addresses that are in that file. So if you needed to build a report to pull IP addresses out of a log file, that'd be a really easy way to do it with select string. But CSV files, they're pretty structured. So it's pretty unlikely you're gonna be you know, using select string on a CSV file. So let's look at a different example. So we can look at even log files. So here we're looking at the component-based servicing log, CBS on Windows. Now this is where it's gonna have update related logging. And we can look for, for instance, PowerShell. And you notice there's a lot of instances of this in the log. 
And I do want to point out that on my system, this log file is six megabytes. And you notice how fast PowerShell could uh, search it and grab all the lines that have PowerShell in it. You know how long that would take you to open it up in Notepad and do a Control F? <laughs> it would take quite a while. Uh, but a really cool part about how Select String works is that you've noticed that we've been just grabbing one line. Well, Select String has a parameter called context, and this tells Select String how many lines before and after to return. So if we if we run this command without the dash con context, we get one line per match. But if we run it with the context one, so I'm gonna run that again, it's gonna give us three lines per match. And what it calls those is I'm gonna run here line 32. I'm piping the same thing as before, but I'm piping it to select object and I'm expanding the context parameter and seeing what that looks like. And so the output, I'm gonna expand this up here so we can see this better. So the context, it has the pre-context and the post-context. And the pre-context is the line or lines, depending on how big your context parameter is, of what comes before the match. And then the post-context is what comes after the match. So if you need to collect more information around it, say you're in a log file, for example, as we are here, maybe you need additional lines around it, you can do that using select string. So if you're familiar with grep, you know that it's incredibly useful in Linux. And so I'm hoping that you can get a lot of mileage out of select string in PowerShell as well. And select string in PowerShell works on Linux, not saying it's better than grep, <laughs> but on Windows where you don't have grep, it's a good option. Thanks for watching.